Hello, and welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast. The podcast where we own our manliness. We don't apologize for what we are. Made in the image of God. Strong, dominant, and in control. We come at manliness the right way from the truth with God at the center. Today's episode is going to be another episode of Manly Pursuits. It seems like the feedback on that has been positive. So we'll put in the bio and then roll into the topic. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a review, hit some stars on the podcast. If you want to check out stuff while you're listening, you can go to goodshepherdtraining.com. Before we roll into that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Leave a review of the podcast if you've listened to it before. Your one-stop shop to find out more, to see pictures, to contact me, to support anything like that is goodshepherdtraining.com. All one word, goodshepherdtraining.com. With that, the bio and then the topic, guys. Who's the guy talking to you through the microphone? First and foremost, I am a Christian. I make no apologies for that. God is number one, and I want to honor that and honor him. I grew up hunting and fishing in the backwoods of the southeastern United States. I joined the Marine Corps at 17. I did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. After my combat tours in Iraq, I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps, teaching urban warfare and desert warfare to Marines and other military forces. After that, I worked for LAPD as a sworn peace officer. I worked regular patrol assignments, more specialized assignments in law enforcement. was in that for a lot of years. I also served the United States Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. I guess I should say that my primary MOSs in both were infantry. I started shooting competition even before I joined the Marine Corps at 17. In fact, by God's grace, with the talents he's given, even won a gold medal before I joined the Marine Corps at 17. I've won more competition shooting matches than I can honestly remember. State Rifle and Pistol Champion a few times over. West Coast Regional Rifle Champion. I've been a private contractor for a three-letter government agency that I won't specify. I've also been blessed to be the commander of a tactical team in a large metropolitan area where our primary objective, our job, was to stop active shooters. And blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and fingers for battle. I've hunted all over this beautiful country from mule deer on the west coast to white tail on the east coast to gray squirrel on the east coast to prairie dogs on the west coast. I have been a professional hunter and guide of all kinds of game professionally hunted things like buffalo and elk and deer and exotic species. I have slain wolf and bear and all manner of beast. And I don't apologize for it. FBI certified, NRA certified, firearms instructor, professional firearms instructor for a lot of years. But if you ask me what I am, I'd say first and foremost, I'm a servant of God, a student of the Bible a teacher, a preacher, and a fisher of men. Okay, today's episode of Manly Pursuits is going to be on hiking. What is hiking? I don't think we need to argue about semantics. I don't think we need to look it up on dictionary.com or Merriam-Webster. I think you all can picture in your mind what hiking is and is not. I'm sure there's something like ambulatory locomotion, cross-country, Blah, blah, blah. And it's called by many different names. In the Marine Corps, we called it humping. In the Army, we called it rucking. But the most common vernacular is hiking. Now, you heard a little bit about my bio. And I guess before we go on, I should mention a little bit more as it pertains to hiking or rucking or humping. I was an infantryman in the Marine Corps. And as you can imagine... I did more than my fair share of hiking, of humping, of rucking with ridiculous amounts of weight. If I never humped after that again, it would have been more than my fair share. But I have since then. 
or however you want to define it, hiking. In fact, I went hiking today. The farthest I've ever hiked in one day, however you define hiking, traveling cross country over land was 52 miles. I was blessed by God to work up to doing 52 miles in a single day. I backed off of that. I did that because I read that great Zulu warriors could travel 50 miles in a day and fight a battle. If that interests you, you can go back and listen to an older episode, Great Warriors in History. But I did that, but I don't know how healthy that is. I'm not saying that hiking is not healthy. It's very healthy. But going 50-something miles in a day, I don't think, is very healthy. I think there should be a good balance between upper body and lower body strength. A lot of men go too far the other way and, you know, skip leg day. But as a man, as a warrior... I have a little saying, I don't know if I came up with it, but I've never heard anybody else say it, is that in order for your hands to do any damage, your feet first have to get you there. So don't skip leg day. But I think if you're doing, you know, 20, 30, 50 miles in a day, your upper body is probably suffering. But I still like to hike. I still enjoy it. I was out hiking today, mostly teaching the puppy how to hike. If you've been listening to most of the podcast, you'll know that I've been blessed with a Rhodesian Ridgeback who's about 15 weeks old and he's just starting to get the hang of healing and actually doing what he's supposed to instead of just being a puppy and wandering around 15 weeks old now. So I've done quite a bit of hiking and all kinds of climates and all kinds of terrain. And that's one of the beautiful things about hiking and one of the reasons I wanted to get into this early in the manly pursuits is Just about anybody, just about any man, and I won't say any man because some people may have such a disability or true physical limitations that they can't. But aside from that, the vast, vast, vast majority of men can hike in almost any climate and almost any terrain. You could even do it. Most alien environment, I think, for humans is an urban environment. I think you could even hike in an urban environment. You could probably even hike... Well, I know because when I went to Manhattan, I hiked across it. But you could pretty much hike in any kind of climate and any kind of terrain from the hot desert to the cold mountains. You can hike. And it has a very low barrier of entry, monetarily wise. And pretty much anything else wise. If you can walk, you can hike. Put one foot in front of the other with a purpose. Hiking. Now, you certainly can spend money on hiking. You could certainly probably go crazy and get all kinds of stuff for hiking, but you don't need to. You can start with what you have. And it's accepted in almost every culture. I can't think of a culture that shuns hiking. A lot of times, like pursuits that I have, if you you might have guessed in my bio, surmise that I've been a professional gunfighter most of my adult life. Guns are very much part of my day to day. It would seem weird to me to not have a gun on my side. But in many cultures, in many places around the world, they can't do that. And I know that I have people that listen from other places. Perhaps they can't have a gun and carry a gun. Like I had a gun on me when I was hiking today, but I know that a lot of men can't do that. Some men may not even be able to get into archery for whatever reason, whatever cultural, whatever. But hiking is something I think almost any culture, any man, like I said, with few exceptions, can do. So if you've been listening to Manly Pursuits and none of them have pertained to you, perhaps this is the one, because this probably has the lowest barrier of entry to any of the things that we'll talk about in Manly Pursuits. Perhaps you're not going to go out and slaughter a beast and butcher it. Perhaps you have no desire to get into archery. But I think that you should seriously consider hiking if it's not part of your life. And I'll give some reasons for that, other than the ones we've already talked about. Health. And I'm not going to start with where you may think. I think it's healthy for the spirit, for the soul, for the mind. And for the body in that order. As your spirit prospers, your body will prosper. 
you know if you listen for any amount of time or even if you listen to the intro, the bio, I believe in God. I believe that we are spiritual beings that dwell in a tent called the body. I believe that hiking is good for the spirit. It's good. And as your spirit prospers, as your true being, your true man prospers, so also your body will prosper. It obviously has health benefits, but I think it also has more predominant benefits for just just being out and enjoying God's creation. Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows us his handiwork. It's good to enjoy God's creation and reflect on the magnitude and majesty of God and to look around and see that every tree, every mountain, every rock, Every tiny insect, every blade of grass, every sparrow that flies in the sky. God made it and God sustains it. Imagine just a small amount of beauty that you can behold with your eyes. And consider the entire beauty of the entire world and the entire galaxy and the entire universe. And try and comprehend the incomprehensible beauty of God and the power of God and the awesomeness of God. And stand in awe and healthy fear and respect of God. And you can get a little bite of that hiking. I think getting out of your cubicle world. And I've lived in that world. And I understand that some men live in that world to take care of their families, to work, to do whatever. But I don't think we were meant to sleep in a cube and drive to another cube in our metal cube. And go get food from another cube and take it back to our original cube and sleep and repeat. I don't think we're made for a cube world. I think a more realistic, more natural world is one that you'll encounter while hiking. And I think that's healthy for the spirit, for the soul, for the mind. It's good for the mind, I think. I... I don't know, because obviously I have a sample size of me, but I think I get some good healthy thinking in and reflection in when I'm hiking. I think it's good for the mind to unplug, to get away, to get off the grid. Now, you can hike and listen to music if you want. That's not my thing. Um, Sometimes I'll listen to podcasts or sermons or gospel music, but a lot of times I'll just hike. I think it's good to get out of your normal And get out. Get outside. I think that's good for the mind. To let your brain wander. Not a lack of stimulus. But different stimulus. I think that's good and healthy. Healthy for your mind. And also. Healthy for your body. Hiking is healthy. You know. It's a good. Humans. Were made. To be ambulatory. To walk. They weren't made to sit in a cubicle all day. You know, kids weren't meant to sit in a classroom all day. I wonder why so many kids have ADD. Is it a problem with the kids or a problem with where they're shoved behind a desk in a cube? They weren't made for that world. They're meant to be outside beating stuff with sticks and running around. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. I think it's healthy. Spirit, soul, mind, and body. Obviously, moving around, hiking is can be healthy. It can be unhealthy if you do it too much or do it wrong. But I think in general, for the vast majority of people, getting outside and hiking is good and healthy. Spirit, soul, mind, and body. I hope this encourages you to either add hiking to part of your life or do more of it if it's already a part of your life. I said, go with what you have. If you decide you want to go hiking tomorrow, get up and go hiking. I don't care if all you have is dress shoes and cotton socks. Don't let that stop you. You know, last week I was out and about and forgot my gym stuff and I worked out in rubber boots. So what? I still worked out. I've worked out many a time in combat boots or hunting boots or cowboy boots or any number of things. 
it might not be optimal, but don't let that be an excuse as a man. You don't make excuses as a man. You get stuff done, and even more so as an alpha male. Get it done if you decide you want to do it. But if you do want to get some stuff where I tell you to start, I'd say with prayer. Obviously, always start with God. He is number one. You couldn't take a single step without him, so don't forget him with the steps that you take. After that, if we're talking about physical stuff, socks, a good pair of socks. I would say a good pair of tight-fitting, 100% polyester socks. Or if you prefer, or if you already have a good pair of 100% merino wool socks, stay away from cotton socks, stay away from loose-fitting socks. But I'd say that's most important, even more important than footwear. <clears throat> After that, the next obvious place to recommend would be boots. Um, it depends on the terrain. It really does. I went hiking today in what they would consider muck boots. Uh, you can look those up if you're not American or, or from the South. But I went hiking in muck boots today, uh, mostly because it was snowy and muddy outside. Didn't let that stop me from hiking. But uh, one of my go-tos would be the Merrill Moabs. They're great. Obviously, in the Marines and starting out hiking, I joined way back when we had the tricolor camouflage. We still had to iron and polish our boots, but just the black jungle boots. If you're looking to get into hiking in some crazy terrain or different terrain and you want to do it on the cheap, get a pair of surplus jungle boots for $20 or $30 American and break them in. You know, if you get some blisters with when you start hiking, that's just probably part of getting your feet tough. Don't let that hold you back. But jungle boots certainly work. Many a uh, alpha male have hiked many a mile in jungle boots. If you don't know what those are, you can just Google jungle boots. I'm sure they'll come up. The next thing I would recommend is water. Now, I'm a little bit different. I, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times when I hike, I don't take food or water. I just don't consider it a necessity. And I know that food and water and digestion takes up energy. And I want to expend that energy hiking. But I know that most people aren't going to do that. My wife, for instance, likes to drink quite a bit of water when she hikes. And I think a lot of people probably do. So next, I would say water if you want to bring it. You won't die unless you're in like the 115 degree Las Vegas or southern Arizona desert for a day without water. But it might be unpleasant. So next, I'd say bring water. Again, you don't need to spend a bunch of money. Just fill up a, you know, an empty plastic bottle. And bring that. If you want something fancy like a Camelback, I think Walmart makes like a knockoff brand for 15 bucks. I don't particularly like Camelbacks, but uh, if you do, that's a, a lot of people do like those. So I would say water is next. And after that, I would say a compass. If you're going to go anywhere. Uh, again, I'm a little bit different. I don't like to stay on a trail. I can't. I generally look for the first opportunity or a good opportunity to get off a trail. My wife generally hikes and stays on trails. A lot of people stay on trails, but I like to go overland. I like to go and look at a mountain and be like, oh, that's where I'm going. Or look at a map and say, there's a river down there. I'm going to find my own way to that river. I'm not going to follow whatever the the main path is. Maybe that's just the way God made me. That's Maybe that's part of being an alpha male is that I don't want to go where everybody else goes. I want to blaze my own trail. I don't know. But that's just me. But I would say a good compass. And understanding how to use a compass. You might think that with all my background and everything that I'm awesome at land navigation. And I know how to do it, but it doesn't come natural to me at all. You know, I I have been lost several times in the woods. So I would say, and by God's grace, he got me back safely. But I would say next, a compass. They don't have to be expensive. I would say something better. You know, it's always good to have a backup compass like the little ones that are on a, wi a wristband or a watch band. But I would say a decent compass, like a Boy Scout compass, a Lensatic compass, or a map compass. I like the map compasses because they work well. They lay flat. They don't take up a lot of room in your pocket. They are good. I would, I would recommend that next. And then if you're any kind of climate where you could die if you get stuck out, the survival blankets, the space blankets, those things cost a dollar or two. And I, they weigh almost nothing. 
and they do work. I have been stuck on the mountains in the wilderness of Idaho and they do work. Um, you, you know, aren't going to be throwing a party inside of one, but they can keep you alive when you might not otherwise. Yeah. Especially in a really cold climate. And don't think that it has to be super cold. If you, something happens and you're out and you get wet and it's 50 degrees, you could get hypothermia. I mean, that's a real thing. So a survival blanket, they're cheap. Again, they don't take up a lot of room. You can put them in your back pocket. And all that stuff that I mentioned, probably less than $10 American. And again, if you don't have that, just get out and hike anyway. You know, get the socks you have, find a water bottle out of the trash, fill it up and get your butt moving. So, you know, don't let the lack of things stop you from hiking. But something tells me if you're listening to this on some kind of smart device, a laptop, a phone, you could probably spare $10 and get that stuff if you want. You know, a lot of people consider hiking rucking with a pack. And I've certainly done quite a bit of that. From my days as being a police officer and being the commander of a tactical team, I kind of like the war belt, which I've kind of adapted as a scout belt. I may do a whole episode on that. But that's kind of how I prefer. But a lot of people like to hike with a pack. I think maybe just the Marine Corps and hiking with ridiculous amounts of weight, way more than is, I think, healthy. Uh, it kind of got me out of that. I'll still hike with a pack if I need to. But if I can carry stuff another way on my on my hips, I generally do. But, you know, hiking with a pack is its own kind of art. And there's a lot that goes into packing a pack, right? You know, putting the heavy stuff on the top, close to your body. And making sure the weight rides on your hips and not your shoulders. There's a lot that goes into that. And perhaps that's its own episode. But I would say start hiking with something. If you want to take a pack, if it's easier. A lot of people just have, you know, an old pack laying around. If you want to take a pack, by all means do. I actually just got a pack for the puppy. Uh, that's going to be one. That's one of the reasons I got that breed. He, you know, his father was 120 pounds, a big, tall dog. They're meant to go 30 miles in a stretch. You know, and follow a trotting horse. That's one of their breed standards, as I understand it. And uh, hopefully he carries all the water because I am in Arizona and water is an issue when I go hiking around here. But anyway, if you want to carry a pack, I, I don't discourage that. It's definitely part of hiking. And something maybe we'll do a whole episode on packs one day. But mostly just get out there and enjoy the beautiful amazing creation that God created for us to richly enjoy. Get out of a cube and get under a starry or a blue sky. Get a little bit dirty. Get manly. With that, guys, I think we'll start wrapping up the episode. If you think this episode is worth a dollar, consider going to goodshepherdtraining.com, scrolling down to Patreon and giving a dollar or more, signing up. It is first and foremost by the grace of God and the talents that God's given me that these podcasts come out. But he also chooses to use people to support these podcasts. These podcasts are free for you to listen to, and that's great, and I like that. But they're not free to produce and put out. We have to pay you know, a provider to put these out on the internet. So if you want to help support the tribe you're now a part of, you can go to goodshepherdtraining.com and scroll down to Patreon. And if you can't or don't want to, that's fine. My God supplies all my needs. If you have it in your heart to give, give. And if not, don't. And don't feel guilty about it. If you want to support in other ways, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. You can leave a couple stars if that's how you do it on whatever app you're on. And as a thank you for listening, I'm going to throw out the tactical tip, I guess it'll be tactical tips this time because I've got a few that relate to hiking and they might not come up again, so I might as well give them to you. If you're starting out hiking and your feet are not yet tough, or even if they are and you plan on going a long distance, something I learned uh, in the Marine Corps, a very tight-fitting pair of dress socks. I mean, very tight-fitting so they don't move. And then another pair of socks on the outside of those like boot socks. Because if those socks rub, and they will, you want them to rub against a tight pair of socks and not against your feet. That will greatly reduce blisters and bloody feet. So that alone. Also, if you're going and you have a way to carry them, 
and you plan on going a long distance, and that varies from person to person, what you consider a long distance, two pair of socks is a good idea. Every time you stop to go to the bathroom or whatever, stop to pee, change your socks. Let the other pair dry if you can hang them in your belt or hang them from your back pocket or on the top of your pack. And then they should be dry, hopefully, unless it's raining or something like that. But hopefully they should be dry by the time you switch again. And dry socks, again, will greatly reduce blistered, bloody feet. And those are miserable when you're hiking. Another one I talked about, water. But it's always good to start out hydrated. It kind of sucks if you start a hike dehydrated. So if you can drink, you know, I've heard it referred to as Israeli overdrink, but drink a lot the night before. Drink a lot the morning of, so you don't have to drink nearly as much on your hike or at all on your hike. But start out super hydrated. And I guess a tactical scripture, one of my favorite scriptures, you'll find in Second Samuel, and also very similarly in Psalm 18. For by you I can run against a troop, by my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power. He makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Thanks for listening, men. I'm humbled and honored that we have this tribe. And be strong and prove yourself a man. Have a blessed day.